Good morning, Magic Cafe, or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I wanted to weigh in with a video because I find it's a lot of the stuff regarding the Battle of Le Belge um, is referencing imagery and clothing and jeans. I, I thought it's all well and good typing, sending images back and forth, photos, taking pictures of my crotch at different angles. Uh, it'd be easier just to do a quick video. So I'm wearing what the label says are skinny jeans. Now, depending on how high up I pull them, they look skinnier or not skinnier. Some people would call them regular. I wouldn't call them baggy, but whatever you describe them as, they're jeans, yeah? Uh, also note that they're blue jeans. If they were white jeans, then shadows like the silhouette from my phone or this would be more prominent. If they were black jeans, it'd be almost invisible, right? But they're blue jeans, so it's kind of the middle ground balance of everything. And I want to show you in this pocket, I have my phone. This is an iPhone 14. It's not an, a Pro, it's not the Max though, so it's the, it's the smaller iPhone. And in this pocket, I have a wallet. <laughs> this is a quiver wallet. And if you can see, it's kind of half full with like 20 or so cards in there. Um, so you could see what a phone looks like compared to a wallet. I've told a little bit of a lie. I don't just have a wallet in there. I also have um, decks in here too. But the decks is ultra slim compared to the wallet. You can see, depending on which way around your wallet goes, it's literally the shape of a wallet. But you could actually get away with having both quite comfortably in your pocket. It makes no blind bit of difference. But unless uh, the, 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 uh, the unfortunate matter is, is that Dex is specifically designed to be a one pocket index. Um, and unfortunately, we can't make that smaller, at least smaller than a deck of cards. So this is uh, 24 millimeters thick when not being compressed by the pockets. A box of cards is 20 millimeters and a Tic Tac is six millimeters. So this is, this is not even as thick as the short edge of a Tic Tac, thicker than a box of cards. And you can see in jeans, how I've described them, because of the sharp edges, I think that stands out more. But even if it doesn't, and you think, oh, this stands out way more. I mean, I think that stands out more, but whatever it still doesn't even look like a deck. If I put a deck of cards in my pocket, I mean, like if I put that on top, that would stand out. If I put them over here, you can see, because the sharp edges, it stands out more. Whatever, right? I just wanted to show you that decks, regardless of the debate, um, in tight, skinny-ish fitting jeans, you, it's literally the same dimensions as a wallet and even and you can put a wallet in there with a dance if you so wish. But there was one more thing which was mentioned, which is this whole debate on whether you should pull a card straight from the pocket. If someone names a card and you go, ta-da, should you pull it from the pocket? Is it a good trick? I think this, I, I'm so against using that trick. It's kind of like, why have a Ferrari engine when you're gonna go and use it for a box car race? You know, it's, 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 oh, it's complete overkill and it's like, Tommy Wonder talks about hiding the method in the shadows. And as, as polite as your audience are, like Darren Brown's new book talks about this, your audience will be polite to you because of proximity. But the further out they are away from you, the more honest they'll be. And magicians, more than anyone, will take a compliment. They'll, they'll, they'll listen to their audience and say, you're amazing, you should go on AGT. And the truth is that just being polite. I think the best thing you can do is actually go and be really critical about yourself and try and get people to be critical about you. If you go and ask your audience, how do you think that worked? Because that's what you should be doing on every trick and any, any method they have, cancel that out in your next performance. If you ask them, how do you think that worked? Whether you have two pocket indexes, three tailored jackets and suits, the, I, I, the type of audience member that couldn't guess that method is not the audience member I wouldn't, I would want to perform for. With that being said, um, someone mentioned that, I, that I'm not creative enough to come up with an interesting uh, performance or ex in, uh, entertaining enough performance to do that effect. And that's true. I'm not a great performer. I do create magic tricks, but I, I'm, I completely agree that I'm not creative enough in the performance realm to come up with that. But I know that was maybe some people might take that as a slight towards me, mind the pun. But I, I, I always try and take the, the potentially negative comments and use them in a positive way context because I think criticism should be used to your power to your advantage to make yourself better and I'm I'm not creative enough in the performance realm to come up with a good 
named card or thought of card to pocket effect where the method is exactly what they think it is, but I thought it would be good to try. So uh, I thought of this idea and haven't done my research on it, so this could, could have been done before, but I thought a cool trick would be to do something like this. Taking on board what uh, Tommy wanted to talk about by hiding the method in the shadows, I figured with a few more layers of deception added on top, I could still have the same end goal, which is the named or thought of card pulled from the pocket, um, but there'd be more elements added in which would distract them from the method. So this is the idea I had, and please don't kill me if this has been done before. I don't know if it has or not. But you take an all deck and hand it to the spectator. So everything would be done hands off. All right, so if I had a participant here, they would do that. But they're gonna take 10 cards from this deck at, at random. So I can, if you don't think that the deck is random or normal, uh, then I, I can't help you there. But for the sake of speed, I'm just gonna count them from the top. And if you want me to shuffle them again, I'm shuffle them again. But I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna start them count backwards from 10 and do it slow. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six and take the last four and think of one of them so i'm gonna place these down i actually instead of this i'm gonna drop the four on top of the six i'm gonna i'm i'm, I'm trying to really i'm gonna tell you how it works anyway so it doesn't matter i'd have them shuffle the cards and in the case of this for the camera because there are some cards which are really favorable in decks so all the cards that are in the outer positions you'll know about which is 26 of them uh, are the cards you can reach in and pull out immediately uh, and then there are other cards that I'd say I think there's four cards in decks which would take you an extra second but for the sake of not giving myself an easy challenge I'm just going to take one out at random and this is this is the tallies are not marked whatever card this is so let's say they think of that card or they name it right so 10 cards I'd say name one of the cards in your hand they can pick them up and look through them so they're thinking of, or they name the seven of spades. My hands are out here in the open still. I'll create whatever magical gesture I want. I'm not going to do it <laughs> right now. Let's say we cast the shadow. And I say, now we need to deal face down through the 10 cards and count as you do. So now they can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. One card has vanished completely hands off. Pretty incredible on its own, but to bring it full circle, I would say the card didn't just vanish, the card teleported into my pocket. I'm going to reach in from decks, and I'm going to pull out the seven spades from my pocket and bring the trick full circle. And now I can. <laughs> That's from a different deck. <laughs> um, but that's, that's the kind of trick I would do with decks. Now, at this point, there would be a cleanup because I'm just thinking on the fly to try and challenge myself creatively. What I would probably do is just collect these as I hand them to the person, and then I could just spread through and cull out and cop off the, the or cut, cut the seven to the top, or do however many. I can literally just maybe uh, pinky count it when it's at the bottom and just spread and show that it's gone. I don't think there'd be too much heat on this. And that's because you've, you've gone full circle. Um, one of the more interesting things in magic is that if you make something vanish, the audience will always look for it. But if you make it reappear, they're interested in the final object. It kind of applies this thinking to, to this uh, effect. Um, and also then on top of that, because, because of what's going on at play, they're holding the cards, they're dealing through, they're naming one. It, it, it just hides this method a little bit more than it would. Now, I don't think this is still a very good trick. I still think this is a bad trick, but it's better than just going, I think, name a card, ta-da, it's in my pocket. I just think it would, it's just a bit too much for them to try to figure out. As for the method, decks in the pocket, and, uh, and it works like this. You all probably know how it works, but if you count backwards from 10 to six and then add four, it actually, actually only comes to nine. So watch 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, but actually there's five cards there, but it sounds like six, plus four. So that's five plus four re in reality, which is nine, but six plus four to everyone else is 10. That's, so that's only nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 
And then the whole ploy of, oh, take the last four and think of one. Actually, drop them on top and think of any one of them. Now, it's just very natural in their head. Six plus four, everyone can work out. I have a, I have a two-year-old. He, he could pr probably work this out. He's very... Well, he's nearly three, so he's getting used to numbers and things. I'm pretty confident an audience member could add, add four to six. Um, and it's not one of those sort of calculations where you have to make a big deal out of it or draw attention to it. It's sort of second nature, right? So, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, plus four, ten. And now obviously when they count, there's only nine. And you're going to count, you could have them count face down and then name the card they were thinking of. So you could say, think of a card. So let's say in this case, they're going to, I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm again, not going to give myself an easy out. Let's say they think of, that's another spade, which is a pretty easy card. So I don't know if you want me to do a four of spades, but I'm assuming you want me to do a different suit because the suits are in that order. We've got a nine of clubs. We've got a jack of clubs, eight of clubs, a king of diamonds. So... Let's shuffle, 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 and we'll go for this card, Five of Clubs. So, Five of Clubs would be the card they're thinking of. Before they reveal that, though, I'd say, look, there was ten cards in your hand. Count face down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One card has vanished from the cards you were holding. Name the card you were thinking of for the very first time. And as soon as they do that, the Five of Clubs... I can just reach into my pocket, hopefully pull it out fast so it looks good for the camera and show to everyone the Five of Clubs has <laughs> appeared there. Um, so that's kind of where my thinking is at. Again, this is unfortunately a deck of cards at least. So you're not going to be able to hide the deck of cards or anything less. Well, I mean, if you maybe if you spread it like this and then wrap it around yourself, it's going to be ultra thin, but you do have to have something inside your pocket, uh, unless you can use a black hole to condense it down to nothing. But with all that being said, you could see at the beginning, there was a wallet on top of it uh, when you took the wallet out. Uh, I don't think all of you will have been fooled for a second, but, but for a moment you would have thought the pocket was empty because it really does look that slim. And again, you can see all around, I'm not wearing particularly high jeans. These are just, they say skinny jeans, maybe would you class them as regular fit, whatever. So, um, taking all that on board, I hope that helped some of you with this debate. Um, I don't really want to get into a war with anyone, I'm not going to get into a war with anyone. If, as long as you, uh, you know, if whatever index you use, no one needs to argue about it. We're really proud of this one. It's, it's like we say in the interviews that we've done, this isn't the best index in the world. It's the perfect index for me and Javier. We keep our phones in this pocket and we have space for one other magic item on us. So we design decks. And yeah, so it's not the best index in the world. No index is the best index in the world. And because they're the ones that, it, the best index in the world is the best one for you. If you don't care about using pockets, use Cheetah. If you want ones in your lapel or with the big ones for folded cards, you can use like Cosmo Solano and Switch one. The Christine Grace's one is incredible. But they're all the best ones for you, depending on what your needs are. And the, the other debate on is this the world's fastest index? I put that title in a video and never realized how hotly debated or how thingy it was. Uh, it's like saying, are you saying Bolt shoes the fastest shoes in the world? They are for him because he's the fastest man in the world or was. And the same goes with this, like like Magic Orthodoxy, David says, uh, it's it's <laughs> it's the user. Like so, if somebody is not as proficient as me or Javier or the other people that have it, it's not going to be the fast in the world for them. They might find it slow. But if someone's put the practice in, because it's not self working, it's not completely easy, then they're going to be lightning quick with it. So, is it the best index in the world? No. And is it the fastest in the world? No. It just depends on who's using it and what they want to use it for. I, I hope that I've been fair. I don't think I can be any more fair than that. And if you have any more questions, please let me know. I'm not looking to get into a war with anyone. Um, and even even the heated debate back and forth about the bulge and the pulling the card from pocket, if you have a way that blows your audience's minds and they truly are feeling magic from it and they don't just see it as a stunt, then then do you do. That's, that's amazing. And uh, the more important thing is that we're all going out and showing and sharing magic with people. Ah, one more thing I didn't want to keep going, but I completely forgot to mention this. All of this debate is a bit, um, sort of, a bit pointless to me because of this. Whether you think decks 
is too big for you or it's shaped a bit like a wallet um, as long as you're not doing the, the what I believe is, is the last option for tricks which is just pulling a card out and showing it from the pocket let me illustrate the point that I'm about to make this way let's say you're doing an invisible deck style routine with decks right the deck is blank and oh, not even a blank deck the card named is face up in a, in a blank deck so blizzard brainwave uh, invisible deck type thing if I had something like this, right, an old digital SLR camera, if I had something like uh, this in my pocket, yeah, and I performed the invisible deck, who cares, right? That if the, if the audience think that's the method and I perform something like the invisible deck, then I've done my job wrong. I, I'm not talking about like a, an index method, an index version. I mean in anything, right? Because... The correct way of using a, an index, whatever index it is, doesn't matter about this one, is the audience never think something is in play using your pockets. They never think you're, you're taking a duplicate or you're taking the name card covertly from your pocket. That's because of your job as a magician. That's the real work is to do with attention and focus and break intention or bring intention in. They should never consider the pocket as an option. So it, does, it doesn't matter if you have something in your pocket that looks like this. And I'm sure some of you may be thinking, actually, when I perform, I do have a bit, some, some, my pockets do bulge with other things, but they still don't think that's the method to the card effects that I'm performing or the billet effects that I'm doing. And the same goes for decks. We may have gone a bit overkill on trying to make it look normal because the reality is it shouldn't matter if it looks like a 50-year-old SLR camera or if it looks like a space hopper or fishbowl or banana in your pocket because it shouldn't even be the method anyway it's completely pointless so we may have gone a bit overkill on it and we also i think um another point i forgot to mention is i kind of think maybe we went a bit overkill on the speed and that um, me using the title of the video world's fastest index was probably a stupid thing again because it should be the world's most intuitive index because the whole idea is that if if i'm going to do an invisible deck effect right and someone let's say they name Ten of Hearts. Someone names the Ten of Hearts. I would need to retrieve that from the pocket and load it into the deck. But, and I'll do it face up because these are kind of the same colour. But if they said Ten of Hearts and I go to my pocket and pull it out and put it in the deck, that's pretty obvious what the method is. So the speed should be redundant. So what, you, what should happen is I, they name the Ten of Hearts. I keep my hands out in the open. Or if I've already got my hand in my pocket, I just stay and talk. I let them hold the deck. Whenever the timing's right, naturally, with the way my body moves, everyone's different, I casually place my hand into my pocket and get the card into palm. But I wouldn't pull my hand out of my pocket there. I would leave the card maybe in the top of my pocket, just like this, so I can get access to it, whatever I want. But I'd, in theory, leave my hand in my pocket for as long as I needed it until the time was right. And whenever the time is right, and then they, maybe they've been shuffling or holding onto the deck, I said, you know what? Pass me that for a second, just at that moment I'd load the card in, and then do it. But that could be a minute, that could be two minutes, it could be five minutes. It could be three seconds, if, if that's what feels right. But it shouldn't matter, like the speed shouldn't be the deciding factor for any of you with an index. It should, the important thing should be the intuitive nature of them. Can you just reach in and take out any card that you want? So those are two points that I want to make. I think we've been a bit... I think it's a bit of a crazy argument to worry about the shape of it, even though we've done what we um, want, which is to make it look like a wallet. Thinking about it, it could have looked like anything because it should never be the method that they're thinking of if you're doing the job correctly. And the speed issue, I've kind of brought it upon myself. Uh, like I just said, is the world's fastest? Depends who's using it, um, but it allows you to do, <laughs> it does allow you to remove cards extremely quick if you put the practice in. All right. Uh, now I know that you're probably sick of looking at my podgy little gump face, so I will leave you go off and enjoy the rest of your day. Remember to be good to each other.